Hi, my name is Peter Walker and I've always been interested in gadgets. And one of the number one gadgets out there, the one you have a lot to do with, are smartwatches. Now, I started out with Casio smartwatches. This is one of my Casio watches, which I actually wore for quite a few years. Um, it gives you the date, the time, and, and even has a little calculator keyboard on it. But then, uh, Android decided to release a win a operating system for watches. So I got this one. This is the Asus ZenWatch 3. Um, it was Android Wear at the time, was later Wear OS when the, the operating system was changed. And it looked good, the watch was stylish, and um, the display was AMOLED, it was, you know, beautiful display. It all worked wonderful, except whenever you tried to do something, it was painfully slow, really painfully slow, and the battery didn't even last a day. You know, and if you have to charge a watch twice a day just to be able to wear it, Sorry, not any good. Surely there's something better. Fast forward to 2021, and the smartwatch scene has changed dramatically from the days of Casio and that early Wear OS watch. A new range of processors has been released, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 4100, and it has dramatically faster processing speeds to make wearing smartwatches much better. Interestingly enough, only two watches are available with that processor. All the other ones have the predecessors, either the 2100, which my old watch had, or the 3100 watch, but I waited until the 4100 was available. And to this date, uh, and we're talking about July 2021, there are only two watches on the market with the Snapdragon 4100 processor, and they're both from Mobfi. This is the one I got few months ago and I've been wearing it and I must admit it's the best watch I've ever had. It's the TicWatch 3 GPS and it makes Wear OS fun. First of all the lagginess is gone, it's really fast, you can look at everything and um, what I do love about it is the dual display. It gives me a little bit of the Casio feeling because instead of a AMOLED always on display. You have like an LCD display, which is a little bit hard to see on the camera, uh, but it is a little bit like this old Casio. In other words, you get a, an LCD type display, which you can see really, really easily in bright sunshine, whereas an, you know all the AMOLED type displays are hard to read in bright sunshine. So I love this watch. I wear it all the time. This is my number one watch. For me, it was worth it, and it was the only one available at the time for 4,100. That has now changed. There is now a 4,100 watch, which is on the market, just come on the market now, which is 199, in other words, almost $200. And it has the same processor, the same features, virtually, and here it is. This is the TicWatch E3, and we're going to do some unboxing. Um, this is still sealed, so I'm using a pair of scissors, and I'm cutting open the side at the bottom. It's, and there you go, pull that off. Uh, the box itself is very cubic, and uh, gives you the basics on the information that you need. Um, but now I'm seeing for the first time that's the watch. 
pulling it out, it looks pretty good. It's got a black silicone strap. And um, yeah, there's, there's a, a protective sheet of, of um, there's, a, there's a protective sheet on top of the watch. And uh, let's just undo it here. A little bit tough to undo. Well, I think maybe I've just got to remove the... So, tip number one, <laughs> remove the insert before trying to release the watch. Uh, that makes it easier, as I've just discovered. So, let us just... So, there is the watch. And what else is in the box? We have a, a quick user's guide. We have... Yeah, it just looks like a compliance leaflet and the product safety information. In the box is also the charging lead and what you always find these little silica gel boxes and that's it. That's, in, that's what's inside the watch. What? So how does it compare with the TikTok GPS3. Well, if you turn them over on the back, you will see that the charging point is on the side on my on the GPS3, and on the E3 it's on the top. The the central section is uh, very similar. It's the same kind of uh, sensor, uh, and I understand it's it's pretty much the same watch. Now, one thing I've noticed uh, when you look at my old my watch, which is a few months old, the writing on it disappears with time. If you compare the writing at the bottom of this, which is still fresh, on my tick watch, it, which I've been wearing for a few months, the writing has disappeared entirely. But I say, it's, that's not important, who reads it over, you read it once, that, that's all. Now, I've been using the TicWatch Pro 3 GPS for about six months. So I'm very well familiar with it, and in fact, I'm very impressed. I, it is my favourite watch to date. So I was very curious to find out how good its little brother, the TicWatch E3, is in comparison. So I've been using this for the last two weeks to find out exactly how this one matches up to the big brother, this one. And that's what we're going to be discussing in the rest of this report. First of all, let's go over the hardware details. Um, the display is actually pretty similar. If I switch them both on, uh, you can see that uh, although the TicWatch Pro 3 GPS is slightly larger, uh, it isn't actually that much difference. However, um, y y on the TicWatch Pro 3 you have this nice bezel with these numbers on it which kind of hides the area around the screen very well, whereas you don't have that on the TicWatch Pro 3. You actually have a very noticeable bezel. Uh, uh, but you get used to it. And um, it does look very good all the same. The displays are different. The TicWatch Pro 3 GPS uh, has two displays. Now I don't know if we can see this here, but this has a LCD-like display, uh, a bit like those old Casio watches. Do you remember those? Uh, which um, were pretty easy to see. Now in comparison, the Pro 3 GPS LCD display, uh, it's called FTSN, but I like to call it the LCD, um, is still very readable, but not as readable as uh, an old Casio watch is. Uh, the advantage of this is that in bright sunlight, this is very easy to read, uh, because it's reflective, and um, 
this makes it easy to use, easy to see, and you don't have to press anything to see it because an LCD display is always on. Just just tap it on, tap on it, and it switches over to the uh, AMOLED display on, and uh, it's very responsive. If I go to here to the list of apps, I can move through very quickly. As you can say, no lagginess at all. Extremely easy to use and very fast and um, a very, very crystal clear display. It's 450 by 450 pixels on a 1.4 inch display with the LCD display on top. So you've got the best of both worlds and that's why I've been using this watch. That's actually why I chose this watch because of the LCD type display. And um, I've been very happy with it. But anyway, let's compare it to this one. The TicWatch E3 um, has no AMOLED display. It has a TFT display, which is like an LED display. Uh, and um, at first glance, it doesn't look much difference. If you if you compare both, to the the this is slightly crisper on the Pro 3, but for a, for a, a casual glance, it doesn't actually look diff any different. And um, if you don't compare them side to side, this is fine. This is very readable. The resolution is not quite as as high. Uh, the resolution is only 360 by 360, but it, that is enough. You still got a clear readable display it, and uh, it is nothing to worry about. I wouldn't worry about the difference in resolution. As you can see, it's very, very fast as well. As to the uh, CPU, they both have the same Qualcomm Snapdragon Wear 4100. Now, there was also a 4100 Plus released, uh, which has an extra coprocessor, which is not implemented in these watches. Now, you may wonder, well, are they missing something? Actually not, uh, because on the, on the first watch which came out, this one, the 4100 Plus processor is actually all about the always-on display. But owners of this watch will actually never use the always-on display. That means the AMOLED display, which is always on, because the LCD display is just so much more practical. So, in reality, there's no, re no need for it. The, the add-on processor is just not needed. And you're getting plenty of battery, plenty of battery life, so it's okay. Don't worry. The, as far as I know, not there are not any watches which have been released with the 4100 Plus. In fact, the only two watches available with the 4100 Plus uh, 100 processor are these two in front of you. No other company has released a watch with these uh, with this processor at the time of recording. Now, if you look at this on the side, um, it actually looks uh, quite stylish. You've got the loudspeaker on this side. You've got the microphone in the middle on, on the other side and two buttons. Now, this casing is metal on, on the top and plastic on the base. And the charging pins are on the right-hand side, basically the right-hand side or if you like left hand side of you turn it over uh, the strap is silicon but it has this like nice sort of stitching effect so it looks like it's a leather display on first appearance and is slightly thick and it's very comfortable i've been wearing this for six months and to be honest the strap is fine it looks good uh, and uh, the watch is a little bit big on the wrist and um, but I find it's it's fine you get used to it very quick very easily if I compare that with this watch then they are pretty close now one thing they are pretty they are pretty close now there's one thing that I need to mention and that is the thickness of the watches if you put the two watches on one on top of each other, you'll notice that the the E3, 
which is a hundred dollars cheaper watch is actually thicker than the than the p3 which is more expensive and has a larger battery i don't know why they couldn't get this but this casing smaller maybe it's due to the fact that it's uh lower priced this casing is totally in plastic but it is well made it does look good and i really like the casing uh, one thing i would have changed though is if you look on the end of this and compare that to here uh, the way they have put these lugs down for the strap make it look all the thicker that makes the watch look thicker if they had put the lugs higher up it would have hidden a bit of the thickness of the watch as they've done with the p3 so i would say you know this looks better as regards to the thickness of the watch it is actually slightly thinner as well as to all, as regarding the strap which comes with the e3 it is a strap it does its job but it it's nothing special it's just um a, a, a silicon strap and i would recommend if you don't like it you can just buy another strap it's 20 millimeters very easy to remove and um so that's not really a criteria as well because that is exchangeable and you can put a strap of your own choosing it's functional it works i just find it uh, just a little bit too simple there you can see the elementary display if i can switch it again there we go the elementary display on the um tickwatch e3 which is uh different it's not an lcd display it is still using the same lcd display it just shows uh, simpler methods now you're seeing the amoled display i can actually force the elementary display in, in, in so i go to the essential mode and i switch to essential mode this will increase the battery life and now it will show me when it comes up the elementary takes takes a little time to appear there it goes so um it doesn't go on for very long when you press the button uh it gives you what you need though it does not react to your finger it will react to 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 movement so it gives you the date it gives you the time uh it gives you your steps and if you press the lower button it will even give you your heart rate which of course you have to have an arm underneath it to get a heart rate and of course the battery level that's all it gives you but that is actually all you need that's if you just want to know the time it's very visible it's very readable and uh, and that's all you need in a um if all you're interested in is in the time and so i think that's fine it's an elementary display and it will extend your battery life i i've heard something like 30 degrees i haven't tested it i haven't had the watch that long and i haven't run it in element just in elementary low mode so i don't know anybody who has to be honest what i dislike about um not having the lcd display is that as you see right now you're looking at a black screen and you know you have to actually move your arm to see uh, the time and then it disappears again whereas on an lcd display there's always something to look at that's my personal choice but if you don't have the lcd display that's fine it is very readable even in sunlight uh, although in bright sight light you will want to use the amoled display because then you can do a double a double click to uh to brighten up the display to be able to see in you know so and as regards elementary display in on both watches i would definitely say the tickwatch pro 3 has the advantage but the tickwatch e3 is a good second place the other thing i ought to tell you about the essential mode i've shown it on the p3 
the E3 is somewhat different in the way essential mode is implemented. If I go to settings, gestures, you will see tilt to weight, battery saving screen on and touch to weight. The P3 does not have the battery setting saving screen on feature. It's missing because it doesn't need it. It has the LCD display. What does this mean? As I have it at the moment, tilt to wake off and battery saving screen on. That means the following will happen. The display is off and by doing that, a little rest mode, although the wrist setting is off, don't get confused. The elementary display comes on. That means if you just want to know the time, you just look quickly, it gives you the elementary time. Date, time, and, and your number of steps and your battery level. More you don't need. So that way you're saving energy. That means when you just briefly twist your arm, you've got the, the time, very easy to see, very easy to read. On briefly, you see it, end of story. You want to see the AMOLED three because it's prettier. Instead of twisting your arm, you just tap on the screen and it gives you the full AMOLED display. Alternatively, you can press one of the buttons as well. So you have the best of the both worlds. You can have the AMOLED display just by tapping on it, or you, or you can have the lower power display just by twisting your arm. I think that is the ideal modus for this watch, because that helps to keep the battery level low when you just want to know the time. And you have the pretty display when you want it just by tapping on it. It's your choice. If you want to see the AMOLED colourful display when you twist your arm, do the following. Go to Settings, Gestures, Tilt to Wake On, and Battery Saving Mode Off. Touch to Wake you can leave, OK? So the opposite settings. And now, now if I twist my arm, the AMOLED display comes on. It's quite quick, so it's not really a problem that it takes half a second to appear. You want to see the time? Look at your watch. There it is. And there you've got the full display, whatever watch face you want. It's your choice. I personally would go for the uh, lower power one, but if you're finding that you're getting fine over in a day and you prefer the AMOLED display, your choice. I've just shown you how to set it up. Move, uh, moving on to, to, to the on the hardware, uh, it is very interesting comparing the sensors. Now, the internals of the watch, both watches, are, are essentially the same. Uh, they have the same processor, yet still there are differences uh, in the processor, in, in the sensors. Both watches have a vibrator a heart rate sensor, an oxygen sensor, an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and off-body sensors. There are, however, differences. The E3 does not have a barometer and does not have an ambient light sensor. Barometer you need to find the, the air pressure or your altitude. So if you're rambling and you're you need to have those that data, then you need to go for the P3 because there is no barometer in the E3. Most people will not care about a barometer. It's not that important. As regards an ambient light sensor, what that does is it sets the display brightness based on your environment. So if you're in a dark environment, it will not be as bright uh, as if you're in bright daylight. And if you really want you're already in bright day, you do a double click and then it gets brighter and that's readable in the brightest, brighter sense uh, in bright sunlight. So you just do a double click and it gets bright enough to be able to see outside. 
Uh, otherwise, it is a little bit difficult, whereas, of course, with the LCD display, uh, in, it can be bright sunlight all you like. It is very visible. The ambient right, light, light center means that on the TicWatch Pro 3, if I go into the settings, onto display, and adjust brightness, I have an auto setting. So that automatically determines whether uh, it needs to be brighter or less bright. If I do the same thing on the E3, if I go to settings, display, brightness, there is no auto setting because there is no uh, light center. I say those are the only two sensors which are missing on the E3 which are on the on the P3. If you understand what you're missing then you're fine. Uh, I think most people will not miss will not miss those two sensors. What I am personally missing but I'm missing this on both watches is a magnum mag Magnometer, in other words, a sensor which measures the uh, magnetic field. In other words, if you have a compass, if you want to have a, a compass application where you can actually have a compass display on the screen and turn the watch and it will tell you which way is north, south, east, west. That's not going to wo work on either watch uh, because they're both missing the magnetometer. Uh, I find that a bit of a pain when you're using the maps application because then uh, when you move the watch left or right it's not going to move and show you exactly which direction to move in. So th that is a feature I've, I find missing in both watches but okay it's a minor thing. In other things the GPS sensor uh, they both have internal GPS uh, receivers. That means you can go for a walk without your phone and it will still record your location. There, is a, there are, however, differences between the two. The E3 only has three sensors. They're GPS, they're GLONASS and they're Baidu, which is the uh, Chinese system. Whereas the P3 has those three systems plus Galileo which is the European system and uh, a very strange sounding system which is used in Japan. So if you're in Japan it might be useful but to be honest they're both pretty good at getting GPS so I would not be worried about if you have three or five different systems they will both tell you where you are with good accuracy. Memory, they both have one gigabyte of RAM and eight gigabyte of ROM. That's all you need. Both the same. That's fine. The phone, the watches run very smoothly with that. Now, as regards the weight of the watches, I measured the weights of both watches on a digital scale and they were not the numbers which Mobfi tells them tells you. So let me give you the real numbers. The E3 weighs 48 grams with the strap and the P3, the Pro 3, weighs 62 grams with the strap. So if you see different numbers on the Mobfi strap, maybe website, maybe they measured it without the straps, I don't know. But those are the numbers I measured. As regards battery life, the E3 has a smaller battery and you get a, a good day out of the, the watch. I've been testing it and um, with a few tricks I could get two days out of this watch uh, by, by uh, using elementary node at night and uh, switching to airplane mode during the day when I did not need to use any internet connectivity and then you could easily get two days out of the E3. Uh, it certainly uh, even with all the sensors switched on will give you a day, a day and a half something like that or a day and a quarter um, easily so as long as you're prepared to recharge this phone 
either overnight or if you're going to use the sleep function to record your things then when you get up and you're in the shower or whatever put it on the charge when it's completely empty this watch takes about 90 minutes to charge now 90 minutes okay over breakfast having a shower and then it's fully charged uh, it is pretty pretty good this P3, for example, will the will last depending on how many apps you're using uh, between three days to four days. I've with lots of tricks, I could get it to the last five days, but uh, you're already pushing it uh, to get to five days. But you certainly don't need to charge this every night. Now, I'm a heavy user of apps, and I do have a cardiogram app running on here which is measuring my heart rate every minute so that's very very heavy usage I still get one and a half to two days even with that heavy usage with this watch so I'm very impressed with the power supply I don't think the e3 would last that long although I to be honest I haven't tested that that app on this watch what I do recommend is protective glass. I've put this on both watches, about exactly the same size I put on both watches. Uh, the size for a 1.4 inch screen. Because you've got a large bezel, there's plenty of room to fit, a, fit on a larger uh, glass on the E3. And the 1.4 inch glass fits beautifully uh, on this one. Gives you extra peace of mind I know that with this glass, if uh, if I you know hit something and scratch the glass, I can just peel it off and put a, a new protective sheet on. Whereas if I had no protective sheet and it got damaged, I would be angry. Uh, so I always put it. I know it's got um, Gorilla Glass on both, which should actually not show any scratches. But I prefer to be cautious, and I so I would recommend just investing little money in getting these they're easy to find on eBay or wherever let's move on to the software both watches are wearing Wear OS the latest version and hot news you've probably heard that um, there's going to be a new version of Wear OS Wear OS version 3 and many people say don't buy Wear operating system watches right now because a new operating system is due to come out called Wear OS 3. Wear OS 3 was put together by Google, Fitbit and Samsung and they're making a, an upgraded operating system which is basically the best of all three systems. Sounds great to get and of course the first question was which existing uh, watches will get to this new operating system and the answer is three the tick watch e3 the tick watch pro 3 gps and the tick watch pro 3 gps lte version that's it all other existing wear os watches are not going to be upgraded to wear os 3. so if you're interested in a wear watch right now I can really only say these are the only two watches you should be looking at uh, because these will be upgraded the other ones will not be upgraded so this is certainly something to consider so with that out of the way which of these two watches should you go for that is what we're going to be looking at both watches have a microphone on the right side and a speaker on the left side that means it will work beautifully with the Google Assistant but there are differences and I'm going to show it here the what the Pro 3 is switched on and now I can say OK Google what time is it in New York yeah, it's worked it out. The time in New York, New York, USA is 9.47 p.m. on Sunday. Right. Now, what did we notice about this is that the AMOLED display 
has to be on for the OK Google to work. I now have the LCD display, the I know it's called FSTN, but uh, uh, I prefer. I, I just like. I just think LCDs. Everybody knows what that is because we've known it from these Casio watches. If I say OK Google now, nothing happens. So this is important to know. AMOLED display. OK Google. What time is it in Las Vegas? Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, is 6.49pm on Sunday. There you go. That works. Amazon Assistant works beautifully on the Pro 3. So what about the E3? Should be the same. It should be the same. It's got the microphone. It's got the speaker. Uh, it does not react when the display is switched off, which is good because that means you're saving energy. Um, so, the settings on both watches are the same. Uh, I have set this watch to have OK Google detection, so it should react properly. Now let's have, let's try it. OK Google. OK Google. OK Google. Or as Scotty would say, computer. No. It doesn't work. I have tried multiple ways. I've checked all the settings. I cannot get this watch to react to OK Google. I can do a double click, or I, no, I can do a long click, and I will get OK Google. What time is it in Las Vegas? The time in Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, is 6.50 p.m. on Sunday. So that works fine. It does work. It does tell you, but the OK Google detection, I could not get it working. OK Google, no reaction. So I don't know why, if it, whether it's a bug, where it's a system error. It can't be a settings error because I've checked all the settings. The settings are correct. Uh, it should react to OK Google. And I have the latest software updates. I, you know, uh, so it's not a lack of uh, of any missing software or, or something like that. It is not reacting to OK Google. This is something you need to know. Um, but there are two ways of going. You can either do a long press on the top button or just shift it to the right and tap on the microphone. Here's a tip: if you're not going to use the sleep program to measure your sleep patterns. In other words, if you're one of these people who takes their watch off at night and puts it on the charger, whatever, there's a great way to save power and prolong the battery life of your watch. Do the following. Go into the list of apps and find the essential app. There it is. Start the Essential app and um, move it to the side. There you can set the auto switch to battery level 5%. That, that's the that's when your battery gets to 5% that it automatically goes to essential mode so you keep, at least can see the time. And then you do auto switch by timer. That's what we're interested in right now. And below that, you can set the times when the watch will switch into the low power essential mode and when it will switch back into the normal mode. So if you know that you go to bed, in my case, it's one o'clock in the morning, you go to bed at one o'clock in the morning or then your watch switches down to the low power mode at one in the morning and you know you get up at, say, eight or nine. In my case, it's nine. Um, you can, you can, uh, it's easy to change it, as you can see. Th 
that means in the, when you're not using the watch it's in the low power mode the watch is not completely off you can still see the time and things but you're not wasting the full power of all the features on when you're not even wearing the watch makes a lot of sense it expands your battery beautifully and can give you as much as an extra day if you do this so i thoroughly recommend you to do this uh, that's one of a few tips i have in order to extend the battery life of your watch and just very quickly it's the same on this watch find the essential mode looks the same to the side same settings there you go on this watch it's even more important than on the on the big one because the battery is not so hot on this i have by doing this i have managed to get three days battery out of the e3 now i think that is quite impressive considering the battery is considerably sm small about half the capacity of the p3 uh, for a watch with similar com capabilities uh, half three days uh, and in fact you'll find in the essential mode it is basically hardly using any power at all when the light is not displaying very very low power and that's great another way of saving energy um, particularly when you're out and about away from home very simple to do pull it down and then you can switch either to settings connectivity wi-fi and switch it off wi-fi off what that does is you're not at home anyway your phone is connected to the watch via bluetooth which is lower energy consumption your watch is not pulling for uh, wi-fi transmitters and that will extend the battery life of your watch while you're out and about and when you want to uh, to have it on it's just very easy just go back to connectivity and wi-fi and switch it on again simple as that another way if, for example, you're getting in your car, you're going to drive an hour or two, you know, you don't want to be disturbed by some, some notifications on your watch or whatever, and you want to save a bit of energy. And I found this, this actually saves quite a bit of energy. Pull it down, click on the aeroplane, airplane mode, you're done. I have found that I can extend the battery life of both watches by simply moving it into airplane mode when you don't need it. It has an advantage, you have less electromagnetic radiation on your arm because it's not transmitting while it's on airplane mode. So health-wise it's even better to have it in airplane mode when you're not going to need the notifications. If you want the notifications, switch it on. When you don't want notifications, particularly when you're in the car or whatever, don't need, it, don't need to be disturbed switch on airplane mode very simple to do and uh, it will save you battery energy and save you being disturbed when you don't want to be disturbed there is another problem you should be aware of if you set an alarm let's say 21.05 okay in other words in two minutes okay got this the alarm set now imagine you're going to bed at night you don't want electromagnetic frequencies on your arm at night so you switch on airplane mode but that is actually not important what is important is because you maybe do not want the watch to light up at, during the night you switch on theater mode theater mode means that uh, you cannot uh, switch on the light by moving it. Yeah? In fact, it goes straight into essential mode. You cannot tap on the screen to switch it on, but you can tap on the side. 
and you can then to see the, the screen. So now we're going to let this time out and wait for the alarm to go off. I switch this on. I have no means of switching off the alarm. I can even go into the alarm app and it won't even st it won't even let me access the alarm app. The only way I can switch off the alarm is to leave cinema mode then I can go into the alarm app and now I can stop it. This I think is a major problem with the Wear OS system and I've reported it a few times to Mobvi but it has not been fixed. So I just wanted to make you aware that this problem is there but it is not just Mobvi, it actually even happens on my old Zenwatch from Asus uh, and and any other Wear OS watch I have tried. This seems to be a general problem of uh, the Wear op OS syst operating system. Talking about that, there is a new Samsung watch which has been announced with Wear OS 3, which is about to be released in the shops. So many of you may be wondering, well, shouldn't I just buy that instead of the Tick Watch? And I think the answer to that is pretty clear. If you have a Samsung smartphone, then yes, you can do that. It would make sense if you have a Samsung smartphone. If you have an iPhone or any other Android phone, then I wouldn't get it because there are too many features which are strictly limited to Samsung phones. So either you have the Samsung watch and the Samsung phone or you buy the Tick watch. I think those are the only options you have. So. I would say in that case, unless you have a Samsung phone, get the Tick Watch now. The Wear OS 3 is coming to the Tick Watch Pro 3, the E3, and I think that is still the best thing to do. So, how accurate is the step counting of the Tick Watch E3 and Pro 3 GPS? This is what we're going to test now. We're now on a Street, Arkanastrasa in Cologne, and we're about to walk 2,500 steps and compare that with what the watches tell us. We're starting here and we're going to walk in a straight line through the town of Cologne Weiden uh, and uh, find out exactly how accurate these steps are. I'm doing it as following. I'm going to be walking and counting every step to myself as I walk along and every 500 steps I'm going to stop and then check what the E3 and the Pro 3 GPS tell me how many steps I've actually done. And as I can't carry this camera and do the walking properly, I'm going to uh, give you a summary at the end of this journey. So let's start. So, I've done it. 2,500 steps. I counted, and uh, if we can have a look there, all the way down that street. It's a straight line from east to west. And I walked it, 
and used both watches. And what did I learn from this? Well, on the TicWatch E3, uh, we got slightly under the number, and the Pro 3 GPS, which was on that arm, uh, actually was pretty accurate. Uh, I will display the exact numbers on the screen. And um, quite an experiment. As I say, I've been walking it, counting every step, and being very careful not to miscount. It's a big danger on this thing. And I walked exactly 2,500 steps up the street. So it's interesting that the E3 uh, is slightly less accurate in counting steps than the Pro 3 GPS, but they're all within limits. I think we can live with the differences. So here's my summary of the test of the two watches, the TicWatch E3 and the TicWatch Pro 3 GPS. I've now had a chance to test both watches and uh, basically there is not a lot of difference between the two. There are subtle differences, however. Uh, the missing barometer, for example, which won't bother many people. Uh, the light sensor, which is missing on the E3, which I don't think is going to bother many people either. Um, the the um, FSTN display, the, what I would call the, F the LCD display on the TicWatch Pro 3 GPS, which you can probably see here. Um, that is a very practical item and uh, that is for me and one of the number one reasons to go for the Pro 3 GPS. Uh, the uh, AMOLED display is of course also a great plus but I was actually surprised the differences are not that great. Uh, the design is a matter of taste. Um, personally I think both are fine. Uh, I've, I do have a slight preference for the, the uh, Pro 3 GPS. I think it just looks a little bit more premium, but then it does cost $100 more. So it's allowed to cost a little bit more. Uh, wearing comfort, they're both comfortable to wear. I think the strap on the E3 leaves a little bit to desire. It's very simple and does not look anything special, but then you can always exchange that. That's not a, an, a an issue worth considering. They're both comfortable to wear, they both look good, and so really you need to decide based on the criteria which you need. If you just need a watch which is fast, which is easy to use, and is at a good price, then go for the E3. There is nothing which is particularly nasty or horrible about it. It's uh, you know, I think the biggest thing to decide on is if you want the LCD type display which does make it much easier to see the time uh, because you can just glance at the watch without having to make any special movements. Apart from that there is not a lot of difference and uh, both I can recommend. I've tried other watches and other watches uh, can be good, can be bad, but I think the LCD display system uh, on the TicWatch Pro is a hammer feature. It gives you simplicity of like an LCD type display, which we all know from Casio type watches. And when you want the AMOLED display, it's there for you too. The the simple TFT type display on the E3 does its job and surprisingly there isn't that much difference in the display. It's, it's more subtle. Uh, obviously the battery life is going to be better or is better on the Pro 3 GPS. So if you're going to use any heavy uh, applications like for example measuring your heart rate every minute as I do then the Pro 3 bigger battery is going to be an advantage. But if you don't mind charging the battery up every night, 
wherever you're mourning, then there's no reason to not go for the U3. Thank you for watching this test. I did my best to explain the differences and it's now up to you. You don't have to worry about the Wear OS 3 version which is coming because you're going to get it on this, these watches as well. Thank you and till the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell and bye bye.